we actually carried out our review of inductive reactants much further. However, it was a good chance to go through impedance. On assignment number three of block three, the unit 17, you also have review for capacitive reactants. Now, capacitive reactants in our formula would look like this. It's the reciprocal of our inductive reactants. In other words, it's 1 over 2 pi Fc. In this case, our unit of measure of capacitance is farads. If it's given to you in any other prefix other than the whole unit, then you'd have to change that. In assignment sheet 3, number 1, you have a problem where you're to find the capacity of reactants. And you're given 20 microfarads and 60 cycles. Now we have to change this, this 20 microfarads to, to farads. And uh, of course, in our prefixes you learn that from micro to the whole unit, we're going two places to the right. That means we have to go six decimal places to the left. Now our decimal is right here. So we're going to have to move it over two plus four or more. We're going to have point one, two, three, four, two. Farads. In other words, 20 microfarads equals tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, we're going to have two hundred thousands for a value for our farads. To plug that in here, it would look like this. We're going to have one over two times 3.14, which is a constant, times our 60 cycles was given to us, times point one two three four two. If I would multiply this out, divide that into 1, we would come out with an answer of 132.7 ohm. Our capacity of reactants then is equal to 132.7 ohms. In other words, this is the opposition to current flow that this capacitor would create in the circuit if we had 60 cycles and had a value of 20 microfarads for capacitance. In the same unit, assignment sheet number four, you're being asked to calculate impedance. And number one, you've got a resistor at five ohms. R1 is five ohms. Your X sub L now is already calculated out for you and you have 10 ohms. Same way with your capacity of reactants is already calculated out at 10 ohms. Now we have a series circuit and you'll remember that opposition to current flow is additive in a series circuit. In this case, we have all three components. We have an RCL or an RLC, however you want to state it, circuit with all components in there. Remember that the effect of the inductor and the capacitor are just opposite one another. So if we use the, the vector method, you'll find that those forces will be opposing. They're also equal in value, which means they'll cancel one another. If I was to let a vector diagram represent this, this situation, we would have 5 ohms of resistive load. Yeah, I better move this over where we can see this a little better here. Let's say that we have 5 ohms of resistive load. We have a capacitor that's twice that size, which would be represented like this. We would have 10 ohms up here. We would have also 10 ohms in this direction. Those forces, like I say, are opposing. 
one equals the other. So actually one cancels out the other. And when you do that, all you end up with for an opposition to current flow in that circuit is resistance. So you would have 5 ohms of impedance in that particular circuit. If you had uh, 100 volts, you see, for an applied voltage, we would know then that to find the current, we would, to find total current, we would take total voltage divided by our total opposition to current flow, which is our impedance. So in this case, we would be taking 100 then, divide it by 5, and our, we would have 20 amps then flowing in the circuit. If I put an ammeter in here like this, we would have 20 amp. Now, you aren't asked to go through and calculate this any further. However, I could go through and show you this, and you would apply this to your other circuits. If we have 20 amps and we know that 20 amps is the same throughout that circuit, that means I could take this 20. In other words, we know we know that uh, that uh, our voltage drop is equal to our current times our resistance or our reactance or our impedance. All, in other words, I could I could say current times resistance, current times reactance, and current times impedance. Uh, all of those, you see. all of those would be used in that circuit. To find voltage drop across the resistor, I would take 5 times 20. I would have 100 volts right there. If I would take my 20 times, uh, if I take my 20 times my 10, I would have a 200 volt drop, you see, across my inductor. I would have the same voltage drop then, take my 10 times my 20 here, as far as my capacitor here, I would have a, a 200 volt drop there as well. In this case, what we've got, now there's our voltage drop all the way around. What we have got here is two forces. Remember, voltage is additive also uh, uh, in a series circuit. Uh, these are opposing forces so that I would draw a vector diagram out just like I did for, for our uh, opposition to current flow. And you would see our 200 volts would cancel our 200 volts up here. And all I would have is 100 volts, you see, then for a total for that circuit. Now in this situation, our current, because it's going to be all resistive, our current now and our voltage, our applied voltage, are going to be in phase with one another. That's what we would refer to as a resonant circuit. It's, uh, it's going to be, we would have actually a 100% power factor. We have no reactive load. One reactive load cancels the other in this case. Now let's jump down to number three in assignment sheet number three, where we're asked to calculate the impedance for a circuit which has 20 ohms of resistive load. Inductive reactance is 10 ohms, the capacitive reactance is 20 ohms. We know that the inductive and capacitive are opposing forces so that when we vector diagram this out, we will have 20 ohms of resistive load, 20 ohms of capacitive reactance, and 10 ohms of inductive reactance. Now, our reactants are opposing. Our net reactants would be to subtract the two, take that value which is greater, and right triangle it with our resistive load. So this 10 here would be subtracted away from the 20, leaving me a net reactance of 10 ohms.
to find our total opposition to current flow, we would right triangle that. To find our total opposition to current flow, we would right triangle that. Our answer would be our impedance or our total opposition to current flow. I've worked that out. You would have 22 then 0.4 ohms for impedance. Our total opposition to current flow created by that resistor and those two reactors would be 22.4 ohms. If I had a voltage of 112 volts, to find my current in that circuit, I would have to divide my total voltage by my total opposition to current flow. I would have 112 divided by 22.4, and that should be 5 amp. Then if I put an ammeter in this circuit, I would have 5 amps being drawn through that circuit. Now the voltage, I won't work all this out, we've done this already, but I know the current's the same throughout all its parts. If I take my current times my opposition to current flow, I'd have my voltage drops all the way around. I would subtract, we know voltage is additive by the right triangle or the vector method. If I would take this, these re two reactive voltages away from one another, right triangle it with the voltage drop I've got across my resistor, I should come out with 112 volts. You might want to try that just for an experiment.